When our kids are asked to quit a sport, a club or an activity they're involved in, should we let them? That is our discussion topic in Coffee Group today with John Cowan from The Parenting Place and psychologist Sarah Chatwin. Good morning to you both. Good morning. morning. Now Sarah, is it okay to quit? I think quitting is a really negative term and I think if the reasons are there and if they're okay, it's fine for a kid to step out of a team. You know, if they have the motivation that is correct and if they've had a conversation with their parent and it all makes sense. I think quitting is okay. Okay, right. Well, that's mm. interesting. We'll get back to that in just a moment. Uh, stickability, though, John. We do want Absolutely. to encourage our kids to have that stickability and be that reliable team member if they're part of a team. So how far do we have to take that? Well, if there's a secret to success in life, it's do the hard thing. Yeah. That's why we get our kids to do chores and to hang in with things, even after they've stopped enjoying them a bit. And so we always insisted that our kids would be learning a musical instrument and playing a team sport each season and they could change at the end of the season, but they had to stick in there for that term, for that season, and then they could make a choice again. Adding the choice in helps them stick to something. Because that's the thing, isn't it? If they're part of a rugby team, they're letting the team that's down right. if they yes. don't show up. That's right, and I think it's important to make sure that the reasons... I think it's important to ask mm. why, actually. Why does a child want to quit or step back or have a rest? Are they stressed? Mm. Are they overloaded with activity? Because mm. I do know there are a lot of kids out there who have activities every day of the week, and sometimes they get to the end of yeah. a week, yeah. and they are just completely spent. So sometimes they come to the point where they go, well, I actually like that and that, but I really think that has to go, mm. just to give me a break. Yeah, and let's be honest, all of those activities are creating a rod, not just for the child's back, but for the parents oh, as I'm well. Thinking too of parents busy. Too. Yeah, yeah, the parents exactly. are driving them everywhere. Exactly. So, John, what do you reckon, I mean, with, with children, is it, or, or Sarah, whichever wants to answer this one, should we let our children have a bit of stress with their workload? Is that a good yes, feeling to have? Yes, I think I children think need to experience a bit of frustration and sometimes a little bit of effort because it's all training for later in life to realise that they, daddy, they, they realise that they can <laughs> achieve more than they think they can. Pushing out the envelope, going a little bit outside their comfort zone, it's all part of their training. But you do check out the things to make sure that they're not dead lost, that they're not awful. I mean, Morris dancing might have been cool when we were kids, but maybe it's <laughs> no, not John, cool anymore. What is Morris dancing? <laughs> Morris dancing is never cool. I also so think that, that parents can't live vicariously through their children. Okay. You should not make your children, you know, in Engage in the activities that were cool for you because as we just found out, Morris dancing is not so yeah, cool these days. I really dreamt about them going on to become professional Morris dancers, but no. I would love to see photos of that. We need to find some photos of that. So what would you say, what should we what conversation should we be having with our children to encourage that stickability? I think you combine it again with that idea of choice. Yes, of course you can pull out of this, but uh, we'll do that at the end of the term. So what would you be thinking of doing next time? So that you're giving them an option so they have some control over their life. And that's a thing which is very frustrating. Also, you check out that it might be something else that's mm. wanting them to quit. There are often other factors that yeah. come into account. They might be being bullied. They might mm. be exhausted. They might have a health issue. Mm -hmm. So it's very important to find out why. Okay, they or they could, go. on the other hand, they could just be lazy. And cut <laughs> the potatoes. Can be, and yes. cut yeah. that, that is another yeah. thing that you have to factor in I think in with I've done that for a period of my life. Yeah. It's not so great, I've got to tell you. <laughs> so obviously the coaches and the teachers don't want the children to quit either. So what sort of conversations should you have with them about your child quitting? I think you can have a really productive conversation with teachers and coaches and just put your um, views mm. to them and see how they feel about what's going on and, and see if they've noticed anything with your child. Then you can all get together and formulate a plan going forward. Mm. And sometimes it is just a blip, isn't it? They have those it few yeah. weeks where they're just like, oh, I hate this, but then they get back into it again. Exactly. And early adolescents, they want to pull out of everything because they're scared of what their mates think mm. and they'd rather sit at home doing nothing and being bored rigid rather than risk their, kid, their mates saying, you know, oh, that's dumb. And so sometimes your knee in the small of their back can be very useful <laughs> oh, at that stage, just that is... to keep them involved again. Sound advice, as always, guys. Thank you so much, Sarah Chatwin Thank and John you. Cowan, for that fabulous advice. A little <laughs> knee in the small of the back.